Well, as sediments are falling, in particular as biological sediments are falling, we can trap them. And we can trap those sediments using something called a sediment trap. And this is what a sediment trap looks like. Again, oceanographers want to understand what processes are causing particles to sink faster or slower in the ocean and what kinds of things can we learn by understanding the sinking rates of ocean of particles and ultimately we want to know how much carbon is being delivered to the seafloor under natural conditions because the rate at which carbon is delivered to the seafloor is the rate at which it's taken out of the atmosphere and removed permanently or at least within the context of plate tectonics semi-permanently and that tells us something about what is an ideal rate at which we can burn fossil fuels and release carbon back into the atmosphere and as of course since carbon dioxide is steadily increasing in fact it's accelerating we know that we've exceeded the ability of the ocean to remove carbon from the atmosphere but this is what a sediment trap looks like it's kind of a fun uh, instrument it has this large waffle comb, honeycomb at the top, so as particles sink in here, they're funneled down to a bottle, and these are really just kind of like plastic Nalgene bottles that you might buy uh, to use for carrying water around. And there's a series of bottles on a rotator, and these rotator may move every day, depending on how long we want to keep this instrument in the water or it may move every week or every month so we can get some um, idea of how fast particles are sinking over time and how fast particles are produced over time through this rotating motor that moves new sample bottles into place so that they can be collected and each one of these sample bottles would then represent a different time period over which the samples were collected so it's a pretty nifty little instrument. These sediment traps are often attached to floats to hold them upright and an anchor and oftentimes that anchor is just a railroad wheel so the wheels that you're watching as that railroads going by the, at the railroad crossing tracks think about that next time. To release this after it's done collecting all of its samples we use something called an acoustic release so we can send a little beep 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 down to the sediment trap and this mechanism here lets go of the sediment trap it floats to the top where it can be retrieved and the weight stands on the seafloor forever at least until it's subducted here's some pictures this is off Bermuda where I had an uh, opportunity to travel several years ago and do some work with Maureen Conti she is a um, biological chemical oceanographer working at uh, the Marine Biological Institute and also uh, Woods Hole at this time in Bermuda and here they are here you can see the sample bottles ready to be deployed here's the floats here's another set of floats and this whole trap is going to be put out into the ocean and here's the railroad wheel that will anchor this uh, sediment trap array. Actually three traps are put on one line and this sits out there for about three months gathering information about rates of sediment productivity and rates of sediment sinking in the Sargasso Sea off the coast of Bermuda on an annual basis and in fact this study this type of study is the longest of its kind in the ocean it's gone on over several decades now so this study has really provided a lot of information to us about the world ocean. Okay, one other important aspect is what happens to sediments as a result of biological activity. All those little critters you see in the, in the videos that we watch and all those little critters that you see uh, eating and carrying particles and creating particles all do something to particles and all play a role in how fast carbon and other elements move to the seafloor or not. Collectively, the rate at which carbon or other kinds of elements are moved through biological activities from the surface of the ocean to the bottom is called the biological pump. So the biological pump is really inclusively all of the biological activities that do something to particles. Okay, So collectively, 
those activities of organisms are called the biological pump. And it includes everything, biologically speaking, that generates, transports, and removes and deposits carbon on its way down to the seafloor. In a sense, it's this biological pump that's counterbalancing the increase in CO2 in the atmosphere. So the biological pump is removing carbon from the atmosphere and we of course are putting it into the atmosphere. So it's a really important process to understand for that reason. Well this is a kind of a busy figure admittedly uh, figure 515 from your book but it illustrates really in even a simplistic kind of way the biological pump and it's not the kind of figure that I expected to study at this point in time but we are going to return to this figure when we talk about um, biological activity, when we talk about productivity in the ocean, and when we talk about food webs. So this is really a, an illustration of processes that we will cover a little bit later on in the semester, but it's an illustration really of all the different kinds of things that go on in the ocean, and it really highlights the complexity in terms of the biological processes, the physical processes, and the chemical processes that go on in the ocean. So kind of take a look at this, just follow some of the the lines, try to uh, look at some of the things that we've already talked about such as sinking, uh, aggregation, things that might um, fragment particles and try to just l get some sense of all the different kinds of biological activities that encompass the biological pump.